Welcome back to another Q&A video here on my YouTube channel. My name is Cody Miller. You're here because you love the sport of swimming. You love hearing me talk about swimming. You watch my vlogs, you listen to my podcasts, and today I'm gonna to be taking strictly the viewer's questions. First off, how do you get a question answered by me on one of my Q&A videos or in one of my weekly Wednesday vlogs? It's easy, make sure you guys are following me on social media, at Swim Miller on Twitter and at Cody Miller on Instagram. Shoot me questions anytime on Twitter, but when I post a picture on Instagram specifically asking for questions, that's your best shot. And without further ado, let's get started. Samboys underscore green asks, what's your opinion on the energy for swim meet? Were you asks, were you interested in competing? All right, I've been getting a lot of questions about that. Really briefly, that meet has been canceled because of the beef between FINA and the newly formed ISL. It was the first meet that was being hosted by the people who are starting the new International Swim League. I was invited. I was contacted by a professional swim club to sign a contract with them and compete in the meet. And I was planning on competing in the meet as long as I didn't have an issue with my knees. Um, but it's been canceled. Um, I Honestly, I, I think that the fact that it was canceled... It's a good thing and a bad thing, and uh, on one hand, the ISL is a good thing. It's going to push the sport forward. It's going to help promote swimming in a lot of new ways, provide a lot of opportunities for a lot of athletes, provide more ways for professional swimmers to make more money, um, provide more ways for it to become more of a spectator sport. There's lots of pros, um, but FINA is fighting it for a lot of different reasons, and you guys can go on Swim Swam or whatever and read about it. But ultimately, I, I believe in the cause. I believe it's a good thing. Um, if you've listened to the podcast, Blake and I talk about it a little bit. It's a good thing. Um, and it, it, it sucks that the meet was canceled because the meet was canceled basically out of fear, right? The fear that FINA was going to penalize swimmers for competing in a meet that they say you can't swim at, right? That the, the national governing body of swimming is saying, hey, you can't do that because we say so. And in my eyes, that's kind of wrong because they're, they're taking away opportunities for their own athletes because they're greedy and they like money and they don't want to lose, they don't want to lose the power that they currently have. Right? They don't want to lose the structure. So it's a really nitty gritty, interesting situation, but it's also an exciting time for swimming, knowing that these changes are going to happen, knowing that there's going to be new things in the sport of swimming that's going to help grow and promote professional swimming. It's going to help increase funding. It's going to help increase the ability for people to continue swimming at a high level post-college and make it more of a career. Um, there's a lot of good, um, but I don't think there's going to be a lot of changes before the 2020 Olympics particularly because that's the biggest thing that FINA is kind of holding over everybody's head, right? They're saying, if you go against our wishes, we have the power to basically keep you from competing in an Olympics, right? Ba they'll basically be able to say, hey, you're not allowed to go to the Olympics because FINA controls the qualification standards for every NGB around the world. So USA Swimming has to follow their criteria. It's very complicated. There's a lot of legal speak. It's really stupid. Um, but like I said, there's, there's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exciting time for the sport of swimming. I'm really pumped about it. And it will be interesting to look back in 10 or 20 years at this time and see the changes that have been made and the progress that has been made and, and what happened. And I think that it's good that there are athletes out there that are really putting themselves out there. Basically, athletes like Ryan Murphy and athletes like Adam Peaty who are basically saying, uh, we're going to do this and we'll fight you on this, right? Like they're not just gonna roll over and that's a good thing. Um, that's all I'll say on that. Melinda asks, can you sing underwater? Obviously. Swimmer Nat 12 asks, how did your friends help you through the worst practices? What did they do for you, specifically James? Yeah, James, the best man at my wedding, helped me through a lot of really crappy practices and it's strictly attitude, strictly attitude. So oftentimes when you're in really hard sets, the only thing you can do to make that moment better is not focus on the negativity and just be silly, jokey, fun, happy, um, playful, whatever. And like James's attitude during tough times was always really funny, very comical, right? Like you have to have some sense of humor. You have to have humor. So oftentimes Lily and I will joke about how much things suck, but we'll make fun of a lot of things and we just kind of get through it. Um, that's the biggest thing. It's just your attitude. It's just, I think that not focusing on the negative 
is number one. And number two, if you do focus on the negative, it's gotta be in like a jokey kind of way and it, it can't be too serious. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Bella Ring 24 asks, what is your favorite line from a movie? Ooh, I should do a full video on that. Off the top of my head, this isn't my all time favorite one, but one comes to my mind is from The Dark Knight when Harvey Dent says, the night is dark as just before the dawn, and I promise you the dawn is coming. And that actually doesn't make sense, because that's actually not true, but I like to think about it in dark times, right? Like when you're struggling through a set, and you feel like you're about to collapse, but you know you only have one more round, or one, one, one more 100, or whatever it is, it's just like, the night is dark as just before the dawn. Like, I don't know, that's kind of, that's kind of nerdy, but I love that line. Also, the line from Gladiator, when Maximus wrecks that dude, and he's like, is this not what you wanted? I uh, <laughs> I love that movie, love that line. I said that to Ray once after, at the end of a set, because everyone was complaining and going slow, and Ray was saying that we couldn't hit certain times. I hope I'm remembering this correctly. And after I threw down like a 5,800 breaststroke pull at the end of this like gnarly set, I like sat on the lane line and I screamed and I was like, ah! And I was like, is this not what you wanted? And and Ray lost it. Like he was crying, laughing. He he literally fell over. He was laughing so hard. That's one of Ray's favorite movies, too. Oh, there's so many good movie lines. I should do a full video on that. Riley asks, who has the high ground between you and Blake? I always have the high ground. That's another great line from Star Wars Revenge of the Sith when he's like, it's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. Oh, it's such such a good line. There's a lot of good lines in that movie. Mason just sent in like way too many questions. Hi Cody, please, how old are you? I'm 26, I turned 27 January 9th. So my birthday's coming up. Uh, Mason also asks, have you ever been to Ghana? No. When are you coming to Africa? I don't know. I would love to come to Africa sometime. Sometime I'll come. Do you get headaches when you swim? Uh, uh, that's from Borgia18. If I if my goggles are too tight, yeah, but not regularly. Fiona asks, can you explain your gear and give examples of good stuff for a starter kit? Yeah, for a starter kick, it's like, all right, you need a kickboard, you need a pull buoy, you need a good set of paddles and a parachute. So we use pulleys a lot. You guys see me using those, where we have those those weights hooked to those cords that go up the wall as we swim, we pull them forward. If you don't have that type of stuff, I recommend getting a parachute. So any type of parachute, underwater pulling, that's huge. Yeah. Rylan from Canada asks, is video games and athletes a good mix? Yes in moderation. So not 10 hours of video games a day, but a moderate healthy amount of video games. Yeah. Rebecca asks, all time favorite TV show? Ooh, uh, The Office is up there. Parks and Rec is up there. Sons of Anarchy is up there. Game of Thrones is up there. Uh, there's so many good ones. Annie asks, do you ever get nervous before practice? So I've, I've said in the vlog before that I, I still and will always get nervous before races, regardless of how big or small they are. Those butterflies in your stomach, those nerves that you feel before races, those are a good thing. If you don't get those, you, there's a problem. And you don't wanna wish those away. You, you want to embrace that feeling. The best athletes in the world definitely embrace nerves. And as far as practice goes, yeah, there are some practices where I get nervous before going to practice because I know how hard it's gonna be. Um, whether I know what kind of set it is or exactly what it is, um, I mean, yeah, there, there are nerves. But sometimes that's a good thing because when you have those feelings and you overcome them and you swim the race or you swim the practice and you can look back and say, I did well, I pushed through this, I pushed through that. It doesn't have to be perfect. But because you had that feeling beforehand, at least for me, I got a bigger sense of satisfaction after the fact. So... Yes. Riley asks, if swimming didn't work out and you had to get any kind of office job, what would you choose? I would never, ever, ever have an office job. Nope, not, not for me. Joe asks, will you ever make daily vlogs or more vlogs? Yes, I will. I will eventually at some point in time, not in the near future, but I will do daily vlogs. Probably when I'm no longer really committed to competitive swimming. So, Probably not till after 2020. I might start doing more vlogs regularly, but here, here's and here's why. I enjoy making these vlogs and editing them together. I enjoy the process. If I start doing more than one a week, suddenly it becomes something that I have to do 
and and I, and I kind of already forced myself to do one a week. Like I want to do one a week, but I don't want it to become a chore, right? Like I don't want it to become a job that I'm forced to do because I don't want it to take the fun away from it. And right now I enjoy filming little bits and pieces throughout the week or one particular one particular day editing it all together into a cohesive narrative story that can be digested, that people can pick little pieces of information from, learn things about sets, see what you know world record holders are doing in the pool and training, and also have it be a, a good solid form of entertainment, right? Like it's predominantly entertainment for the viewers. Like I hope you guys enjoy watching me and Lily goof off in the water, seeing my practices, seeing my stupid Harry Potter stuff. Um, that's what this vlog is. Will it evolve into something else in the future? Yes, but for now, I, I don't. I don't want to force that. So I like doing one a week, um, maybe maybe more than one a week here and there, um, and that's part of the reason why I haven't done too many Q and A videos is because I, I just don't want to put too much stuff on my plate to do because it, it does take time, and I want it to be fun, and I don't want to overdo it, and that's the biggest thing. But. Yeah, and so that's one reason why I say in some of my vlogs I have big plans for my YouTube channel in the future. I do because when I'm done competitively swimming, maybe after 2020, maybe after 2021, I'm I'm still going to be swimming and I'm still going to be very involved and highly active in the swimming world and in the swimming community, but I'll do have a lot more emphasis on my video making and it will kind of become a part of my business and become a part of some of my plans. And I'll spare you the details on that. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So when I ask people to share my channel, share my videos, I, like, I'm, it, it, I really mean it because it's gonna help me. And also, I mean, I love all the positive feedback that I get from the viewers all the time. You know, the stories of people all over the world who say they watch my practices or my videos before practices or early in the morning or late at night, right when I post, whatever. Um, this, that's something that I never expected when I started this channel was the immense amount of positive feedback from people, particularly young kids and high schoolers who are swimming but who like my content. And that's fun because for me it was just I want to learn how to edit stuff and I was like, the best way to do that is just to film myself doing stuff, and it's kind of evolved. That's where we're at. All right, guys, and that's a wrap on today's Q&A video. I hope you got your questions answered. If you didn't, keep sending them in. I'm gonna try to do more of these Q&A videos in the future. How do you get your question answered by me? It's easy. Make sure you guys are following me on social media, at Swim Miller on Twitter and at Cody Miller on Instagram. Vlogs every Wednesdays. There's a new podcast up. Go listen to that. And until my next video, I will see you guys later.